All right, I'm sure you know what this means. Let's process some of this. Uh, picked up at the range uh, last weekend. I haven't gotten a chance to get out there this weekend, but yeah, it's a fair amount. It's enough to work with. Today, I'm going to give this stuff a shot. Down professional. Um, it's at Sam's and uh, well, it's cheaper than the, the Ultra that people usually use. And looking around online, um, people seem to like it better. Uh, seems they put some of the stuff in back in that <clears throat> um, they've taken out. I guess Don has been reformulated a bunch of times over the years, take out phosphates and all kinds of stuff that you know made it work better than it does now so guess we'll see i'm gonna use you know my normal amount and give it a shot get in, in let me shine um no matter what i'm doing i always use the same amount of let me shine because i've found that in my frank Roy arsenal um anything over a quarter teaspoon my brass starts to darken um no matter what it is, uh, 22, 223, it just, it doesn't shine up nice. So I found that a quarter teaspoon works well. Um, on initial, initial cleanings, anything but lube removal, I use a teaspoon of Dawn. And when it comes to lube removal, I use a tablespoon of Dawn. Uh, a teaspoon doesn't cut it. And I, I found myself running it three times or so and just not getting any good results i pumped in some more and, well it, well it worked so that's the way i figured works for me um the mileage may vary but eh. <laughs> all right uh let me get my the rest of my stuff together I pretty moistened all my seals. Uh, cause if you don't, many of you have figured out that uh, they'll the leak. So, then my bucket of pens. I got my bucket of media here. Now, uh, something I found <clears throat> is that the uh, Frankfurt Arsenal stuff tends to be long and thin. Um, while. I've got some of the gun tap and it's probably three quarters of length and fatter. Uh, what I found is that the professional a lot of times they'll have short pieces that just are short just short enough to work themselves in sideways, get wedged in the um come on. Get wedged in the rim here and can be a real pain. If not impossible to get out. A lot of times tapping them on a good strong magnet will work them out. But not always. I've been using the Frank Frankfurt Arsenal. Originally, I mean, eventually I'll probably get rid of the short ones or it'll wear out. Who knows? Alright, I'm going to get this in the bucket. Um, it's not going to work on camera, so be back in a sec. I'm not sure if you can make out the difference in the diameter. Uh, but. Um, this one's a Frankfurt Arsenal, and this one's a whoop, gun tap. And, ah, yeah, maybe like this. There's a slight difference in the length. Guess it's not as big as I was thinking, but the diameter is definitely different. I tried to hold them in a pair of uh, duck bills, and the gun tap was fat enough where it wouldn't grip the um, the Frankfurt Arsenal. Even though I found a little place where it was a chunk was taken out of, but just a shallow chunk. But yeah, there's definitely a difference. Um, cleaning wise. I don't know. <clears throat> One thing the Frankfurt Arsenal's do that I'm not sure if the other ones do is 
sometimes they will pack these tight. And uh, they stack double depth when they do. And I've had it where you have to tap it on a strong magnet till one or two you start working out. Eventually they just, you know, it'll just suck them right out. But it can be a pain. Um, doesn't happen very often, but uh, maybe one or two uh, per tumble. <clears throat> I found um, since there's, you know, no flash hole. You can't do as many of these as say two two three. Like Frankfurt says a thousand two two three. And it does work. And it works well, surprisingly. I tried, you know, I'm like, oh these are smaller, I can pack a bunch. <laughs> Terrible results. Um so I reduced the amount to I don't know, about a thousand, figuring, hey, they're smaller. Terrible results. I found about 500 or so. Uh, maybe a pound, which is about 700 average. Uh, works well. But you go over that, and the results are terrible. And um, my theory is because there's no flash hole, and they can't just work through and keep on going as they tumble. They've got to go in and then come back out. Um, but, yeah, that's... That's my findings anyway. So let's see. Hold on a sec. Okay, by average weight, you saw the, the ragu jar wasn't full. There's about a thousand and fifty. Um on average, I just went with a uh, ten grain as an average because they'll range from nine to eleven roughly. So, hmm, it's a little over what I usually do, but supposedly this soap dawns better, so, but yeah, let's give it a shot, see what happens, and if it fails, I'll tumble it again. <laughs> Not like I've never done it before. All right, I'll be back when it's done. Oop, had to drop a few. Feel like Elvis. Right. See you in a bit. All right, quick note. Um, the hose, the the water had gone cold. I, I you know run hot water through it. Uh, so I had to warm it up. So I I rinsed. I gave these pre-rinse, which I usually forget to do. While they're sitting in there, I just sprayed cold water in them. Uh, put the screen in it. Here's the thing. 22 long rifle even with the rims on go right through these babies um, <laughs> It barely slows them down. So what I did was I cut some window screen It fits Well, you can see it fits right in there and whoop, Put this in uh, over it and screw it in and uh few pins get through so I have to you know separate it on table with a magnet so I uh, I dump them out in in that um, it's all tray out of a fridge uh, works pretty well how way everything's kept I can run a magnet through the water pick up uh, my pins and uh, get on with things uh, so yeah because 22 long rifle Picks up a lot of dirt and crap at the range. People step on it. You pick it up out of the dirt when you're trying to get more. Just pick up the shiny stuff. Um, uh, if it starts to bake and get blackened from uh, the elements, it I think the zinc comes out. I'm not sure which which it is, but it'll get thin and kind of brittle it gets where you can bend it without annealing and you just, you just toss that crap uh and if it's just starting it might buff out in the in the tumbler it might not so i make my decision after it's cleaned uh i usually only tumble for about an hour figure you know i'm not going for beauty at this point and they'll get tumbled uh, what three times tumble them to clean them uh, 
tumble them after de-rimming and it seems there's a third time in there oh tumble them after annealing yeah woo <laughs> yeah. there goes that memory issue um but um yeah well gotta get on with this and we'll get i'll get back to you <laughs> there i know i mentioned this before but i just can't stress this enough uh never tumble these together okay uh, it's a d-rim 22 long rifle it's a, a d-rim short um let's see oh, i got a short here's a 22 win mag so just a, they'll just about fit in but that can and it will work its way down in there and you'll never get it out toss them both um 22 win mag 17 hmr not a problem this is the beast. Uh, first mistake I made. I tumbled my 223 with um, 22 brass I had uh, collected. They fit right in. They'll wedge a little bit and pins won't get in, neither get cleaned. And yeah, fun times. Uh, let's see. Will these fit in? They can. Uh, especially the CHMR. If these do expand it enough, the force of tumbling around, these can get wedged in. Same issue. So, yeah, 223 by itself. <clears throat> Derimmed. I mean, sometimes they get mixed in, you know, crap happens. Uh, Hopefully, they're only tumbled with other 22 brass. Because, you know, then they just, they won't fit. And that's all well and good. But, yeah, mix in some wind mag. Uh, and it's a recipe for disaster. Uh, same as with 223. Uh, 17 HMR doesn't seem to be the problem. Except with two, two, three. So, yeah, just a word of warning. <laughs> I've been there and done that, and uh, beat my head against the wall. Like I really need that. <laughs> All right. Uh, talk to you in a bit. Bye. -bye. All right. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> Into the screen, cut it just, just fits in there, and that will clamp it. Okay. There's a crack in this thing. But Man, looks like it did pretty good. As you can tell, they work right through. No problem. That strainer doesn't even slow them down. When they're derimmed, it's even worse so this was the option I came up with um, at first I was trying to find some mesh but mesh is very expensive and figured eh, this works this works well enough 
Let me see. Yeah, they look fine. All right. Usually I do a thousand. They don't come out shiny. They come out kind of gray and just grungy looking. So I'm happy. All right, let me get these rinsed and get back to you. As you can see, some pins make it through the screen, but uh, it's minimal compared to what it would be. And I'm, you know, the, the brass doesn't make it through. I'm thinking that pre-rinse paid off because usually when I take the caps off, um, in here is just full of sand and I have to rinse them a bunch of times and when I separate um, brass I bring home I shake it I, I put it in a um, little sifter made with window screen and I sift out as much as I can but still there's usually just encrusted around where the caps go on so I rinse this out you know flip it over rinse again and then I'll, I'll fill it with water and run it for another uh, 15 minutes half hour just to let clean water work in uh, work out any um, stuck you know soap and sand that might still be um, in in the casings because it's hard to really rinse them out good just Blasting them with water. All right, in a bit. All right, they're rinsed, and uh, I do. They dump out some small batches. Um, here's something. Uh, I found these pretty useless. I'll show you why. Um, there's actually only six magnets in there, so the surface area is. Pretty pathetic. Uh, so there's, they have limited uses in, in my opinion. What I did was my dad had this laying around for years. I remember when I was living at home. And I don't know. I mean, you get an idea of how big that is. It's not a microwave one. Not sure what it came out of. But I have found those work really well too. I did. I happen to have. It wasn't planned either. Uh, this Tupperware bowl, which is cracked and I've taped up recently, um, and this fits in there just right at the very bottom. Um, there's a little gap at the side. I reach in. And the trick is to get it standing up before you pull it out. So there's minimal um, surface here for the um, for attraction. Oops. Oh. What I do is I dump them in my bucket. Uh, what I found works well is you spread these out. Just, just use a light pressure. Just roll them away, and the farther you go, um, if you're gentle, you'll leave most of the pins right in the middle. And then you can just um, take the magnet in there and get a um, nice big mountain of them, basically, without grabbing a bunch of brass. Because, of course, these are light. There's um, pins in them, and it'll pick them up. I mean, that's a pretty good job. Uh, I think, see, there's some brass in there. Um, some may end up in the bucket, and I'll find it. And it out. Yep, there sure is a couple pieces. pieces all right yeah I just do that 
and then to roll them back. The more you roll them, the more the pins work out, so it's just easier to um, get at them with a magnet. The more you leave in the middle. Then when it gets down to almost no pins, what I'll do is I'll section like separate a group like this, and I'll I'll check that group to see if there's any in it with a magnet the best I can. You always miss some. And when I'm satisfied, I'll move it to a um, you know assumed clean pile. Take them and you get them, you flip them so that the mouth faces a magnet and it will usually suck them out. Water tension um, yeah, can keep it in if they're jammed full. Sometimes they are really full. <laughs> and you got to work those. little work involved there but like I say you just flip it towards it and almost always we'll empty them right out but like I say almost always and I mean you can go straight from here into uh, annealing but I have found that the heat will uh, affect the mag mag yeah it's not magnetic but the magnetic properties of the steel and I've had them stop being attracted to magnets so I bake them at 200 degrees for about an hour on a baking sheet and uh, you always find a few in the in the baking sheet um, usually not that many but you know I figure why risk it there could be a bunch for all I know but, um, yeah, I just dump them back so I go over them multiple times this way just just for safety's sake pins are expensive <laughs> I was saying, you can just grab it in there and start it up, but they will follow, as you can see. But once you go straight up and pull it out, there's just this little bit to be attracted to. And the lip here, sometimes they'll get up to there and they can't flip over usually. So every now and then I'll end up with a few pins and I hurry and get them off because I don't like them to get magnetized because... You leave them on the magnet too long, they start sticking to each other, they start picking up every bit of ferrous filing around, and it's just a mess. So, yeah, find it just to work out better that way. Like you say, a lot of this stuff is just time consuming. Um, it's not like this is labor intensive, it just takes a while oh like I was saying what I'll do is I will do it like this like okay this section here I'll, I'll get them try to lay them flat so they're not stacked on top so the magnet can lay right on top and if the pins on the bottom it can be as close as it can get and I just touch them and, yeah, I picked up a few. Ooh, I don't think that'll buff out. Minor damage will buff out, but yeah, I don't think that will. Um, and when none of them get picked up in this group, um, I'll put them in a container or um on on baking sheet 
and do another section until they're all done and and uh, I'll dry them. All right, I'll be back. See you. Like this. Come on, focus. This is junk. See how it's um anything but shiny. It's uh all just yeah. Eventually they get where you can. Yep, I can squeeze that tip without huge amounts of pressure where this I can't it just um, makes them weak so yeah there's there's a, a little bit where you see it and there's little little specks and a lot of times I found that um, that'll buff off and in, in um, tumbling but if it doesn't in the uh recycle bin they go <laughs> um i save it up uh, one of my neighbors um scrap stuff to uh buffer his uh retirement fund so i give him stuff like this all right so i'd let you see that oh stuff like this um, unless there's a, a hard crease in it, I can, uh, work that out. What I do is I take a pair of ductiles and give it a gentle squeeze till it opens up just, yeah, that much. And I can gently work the, um, the D-rim base punch in there and it'll round it right out. And like I said, a, a sharp crease will crack, but if it's just a gentle, you know, it's still rounded, nine out of ten times it'll buff right out and uh, work perfectly fine. <laughs> okay, time for the oven. Uh, that's at least a thousand, so it'll keep me busy for a little while. We still get more. All right. And we have brass. I think these are all cooled down and ready to process. So, I guess next will be um, de-rimming and then annealing. Because that's the order you're supposed to do it in. Some people do it the other way, but once they're softened up, uh, and they say it can cause them to stretch a little more or fail. Sometimes it um, especially if the, the, um, the firing pin is ripped through, is, uh, penetrated, uh, they will, it eh, seems violent, but they will tear, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's freaky the first <laughs> few times, um, but, all right, well, in the next one, yeah. Actually, make some progress. All right, see ya.